are supposed to be joined today by the uh, wonderful Tully uh, Morhead Pisani, who is our director of product management at Bonterra. Um, Tully is really responsible for building the groundbreaking products in the impact management and case management space here at Bonterra. Uh, she helps with our product strategy, our roadmap, our vision, uh, empowering organizations to measure and accelerate the progress they bring to the world. So I uh, wanted to keep this face here because Tuller, Tully is your person, but unfortunately she is down with the stomach bug uh, and really wanted to power through for today. Uh, but we've been uh, in, in talks this whole morning and just wasn't going to happen, which I'm sure a lot of us on this call can uh, relate to and understand. So we have brought in the next best thing. Uh, we have Thomas Bezito with us. So if you've been a um, case management and impact management customer with Bonterra, you probably recognize his face. He is our uh, VP of product management in this category. So um, super knowledgeable on all things our roadmap and really grateful uh, to him for stepping in. He's gonna, gonna give you a great uh, show today. So thank you so much, Tom. Uh, really appreciate it. And I will let you uh, take it from here. Awesome. Thank you, Madden. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I know I'm going to try to uh, fill Tully's shoes as best as possible. Uh, I know that I won't do quite as good of a job as I know that she would have done, but thank you all for coming with me along this journey. Uh, what I'm going to start with as we jump into our overall roadmap, I want to make sure that you all can uh, um, just uh, be reminded by who we are as Bonterra, right? I know that many of you likely have been uh, customers of our Apricot, or ETO, all of our impact management products uh, for many years. But as a reminder, uh, we as Bonterra have come together over the last couple of years to be able to join together so much more within the overall uh, social good space. We have brought together the best technologies around everything when it comes to impact management, with fundraising engagement, uh, with uh, strategic philanthropy, all of the best products to be able to come together within the family of uh, our Bonterra overall focused on making sure that we can connect things like uh, impact measurement, that we can uh, help you all better drive your funding opportunities. And of course, making sure that uh, we can connect the funders to those that are doing the work on the ground. So really excited about everything we're doing with Bonterra. And hopefully you all had a chance to be able to see on our fundraising and engagement side, the recent edition of Donor Drive. Very happy to join them into the Bonterra family. So really excited to be able to share all of the things that we are doing across Bonterra and everything that we continue to grow within the family of products uh, you know, that we have. With that, our vision as well is a very clear statement focused on making sure that we are helping to drive the social good ecosystem. What we want to do is we want to be able to help build trust, transform giving, and accelerate impact so that way we can help bring the percent of U.S. giving to 3% of U.S. GDP by the year 2033. That is an impactful and incredibly important mission that we are all part of here at Bonterra, and we want to make sure that we are helping move the needle toward that goal. And hopefully everything that you hear, not just from us here today, but across the rest of the Bonterra products will help to provide clarity in how we're going to drive this vision, how we're going to be able to you know, make this happen, especially as it comes through what we were all here today with the case and impact uh, management systems. So with that, uh, what I also want to make sure to cover is just how impact management fits in, right? So what we want to make sure that uh, you all you know, can remember is that how important impact management is to the overall ecosystem within Bonterra. So a lot of uh, what we want to make sure that we're bringing together is, like I mentioned, the ability to uh, engage with your fundraisers, to be able to work with funders, to be able to work with supporters within, this, within the social good ecosystem. We are here focused on impact management, which I know that you are all so uh, focused and important in helping drive. So this is the work that help helps move the needle on impact and gets the work done. It's the results here in this green arrow that we want to make sure that we are able to build and grow and share over time within the rest of the funders and supporters within our overall network. So it is our goal here uh, to make sure that Apricot and ETO uh, can help to build the powerful and easy systems that can help you get a better picture of your overall, overall work to help you find the capacity that you need to be able to invest back in your services and make sure that uh, you have those pathways to more easily and more efficiently be able to get the answers and tasks that you need to be able to help drive that work within your organizations. And ultimately, um, if you choose making sure to help you drive 
that story of impact back to your funders, back to your supporters uh, within your overall ecosystem. So uh, you've heard me say it before, but I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the vision for impact management, which is still to be the Peloton of program impact. What we mean by that is when you think about Peloton as a business, they uh, not just built a great exercise bike, they transformed the fitness industry. We want to do the same. We don't just want to build a great case management tool set. We want to be able to connect you with your great case management tools with the measurement and the community around you to be able to help transform the impact that you are all are generating in your communities. So you think about uh, this as you know the most impactful, easiest to use impact software, that's the bike. The ability to work with your colleagues, your peers, uh, those uh, best practice organizations within your community, those are the classes, right? The ability to show proof of the impact that you are driving, that's the measurement. And of course, connecting you with those funders, that's the coaching that we want to be able to drive to. When we look down within uh, you know, this view, we do break down our vision into what we call our value themes, where we want to make sure that we are providing the most value to your organizations, whether that's through increasing capacity, measuring program impact, or helping you improve your program impact. And of course, the areas that we are primarily focused on investing in as we are helping to drive this long-term vision are the investment themes that you're going to see below and that you're going to see throughout uh, this overall roadmap. You'll be able to see how we are focusing our investment throughout our products to make sure that we can help to grow and drive uh, everything that you all are doing within our products. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and move to, I know, an area that you all are very excited to be able to hear. What is new within our products. So we're gonna start with some of the recently released within Apricot, and I'm really excited to be able to share all of the exciting things that the team has been building uh, you know, throughout uh, this year so far. Um, and then after this, we'll jump into where we are going next. So uh, as mentioned, what we're, where we're gonna first start within our investment themes, we are focused on how we are helping to optimize our features across Apricot. What we wanna make sure that we're doing is we're helping to make our system so much more easy for you all to use uh, that you can see the benefits of the best uh, best functionality within Apricot, that you can you know, start to feel the improvement of the overall experience within the product and making sure that we're helping to simplify and make it just easier to get started and get working with. So these are the areas that we're gonna be you know, working through and focused on within these next upcoming releases. But really excited to be able to see a lot of this. And first, what I'll jump into here is our optimized functionality. So uh, what we have done is uh, starting with authentication verification. Every time you take an action inside of Apricot, whether that's saving a record or running a search or a report, the system is going to check to see who you are and making sure that you are still who you said you are and that you are still active. Uh, and that is very important for our overall security within the system. But because that is uh, such a critical aspect in every action that happens, that can be a massive uh, draw within the system. So what we have done uh, earlier this year, and I'm sure this is something that uh, you all have hopefully felt within the system is, we've made this so much more efficient. We have been able to improve the way that Apricot manages its sessions so that not only do we keep the uh, amazing security that I know you all rely and trust uh, within Apricot, we have made it faster. We have modernized uh, the system in the back end that uh, does these checks, and we are uh, able to do this in such a more performant and more, uh, more efficient way. So this is one of those features that uh, uh, I'd like to say you might not see the difference, but I'm hoping that you're able to feel the difference and how we're helping to improve the overall experience in Apricot every single day. Second in the optimized functionality world is some of the improvements that we've been making within the API. This is another aspect where, again, you may not be able to see the changes, but I'm hoping that you're able to feel them. What we have been building in within our overall API within Apricot is the improved ability to transport data or to be able to transfer what is necessary within all of the individual features. So uh, what you can think of is this is sort of the backbone, the connective tissue between the features and the functionality within Apricot. And this is so important that we can make this so much more streamlined and performant, not only for the 
feeling inside of Apricot, but also for those of you who are leveraging some of our uh, integrations or third party partners to be able to connect more into your overall Apricot system. So this is a massive area for us to be able to make these improvements. So that way you can start to feel, you know, uh, the performance gains. So uh, uh, you can think about it as there is just a lot to keep track of inside of Apricot. Um, and what we're doing is we're making that so much more easy for you to be able to do that. So it's super important that we continue to make these, these updates. Again, uh, the areas where you may not be able to see, but you will hopefully feel the general improvement within the system. Next in the optimized functionality space uh, is a bit more generic. What we went through, uh, what our engineering teams have gone through is scanned the execution time for every single task within Apricot, making sure that we are looking at every single search, every single um, way that pages load, every single way that the front end of the application, what you are clicking through, interacts with the database. And what we did was we looked at every single one of, of those database interactions, uh, which are individual SQL queries, and we improved them. We went through and we uh, looked at the runtime. If the runtime was slower than we inspected, we investigated why, and we rewrote uh, that query to make it even more efficient. These are the general or the generic queries across Apricot, and these are the ways that we have been focusing on just trying to remove any of the unnecessary steps or making sure that what, we're, what we can focus on is bringing you the fastest, most performant system, so that way you don't have to wait for Apricot uh, as you are helping your uh, individual participants or you're working through your program. We are constantly focused on this backend to make sure that we are making these updates uh, so that way the system is that much faster and more efficient. Uh, and lastly, uh, I'm sorry, not lastly, before that, uh, the one more optimized functionality piece uh, that I wanna call out, this is something that hopefully you can feel. This is just a just a just uh, an, an extra, uh, value add to hopefully everyone on this call. When you're thinking about how you are managing your Apricot, and as you're thinking about how you are managing uh, the uh, the users within your system, we want to make sure that it's that much easier for you to be able to manage your staff, to be able to manage uh, everyone on your team. And what a simple quality of life improvement uh, that we choose to make, uh, which is to help your organization. Uh, better unlock when your users may become locked out. So again, I think about this all the time. Uh, I'm sure I've uh, run into this and I'm sure that many of you have as well, where you accidentally have locked yourself out of the system. And now instead of having to contact our support and having to wait for uh, the for the support team to be able to help uh, you unlock you know, that user or that staff within your system, you as an administrator now have the ability to go in and unlock the staff yourself. So with so many passwords uh, having to be able to manage, this is an easy thing for, I'm sure, your staff to run into. And this is an easy thing for us to be able to help you to be able to better manage um, you know, those uh, staff members and those locks when they do happen. So now with an Apricot, you are able to go into the user administration section if a customer has become or if a user has become locked, and you're able to see a new lock icon next to their name, be able to click on that like lock icon and choose to unlock them yourself. So such a very small but easy enhancement that I'm hoping helps to uh, just improve your everyday uh, experience with an apricot. And lastly, <laughs> within the optimi optimized functionality space, uh, we also made one addition into how single sign-on is managed with an apricot. So, uh, this one is for if you are a potentially larger or more, more complex organization, you may be operating with more stringent standards, or it may be uh, an area where um, you are managing uh, multiple uh, user uh, pools within how you are connecting into uh, Apricot. And so what we wanted to make sure that we had the ability to add on was user pools within Apricot. So what that means is if you are managing more than one instance of Apricot, you can very easily connect into and configure into multiple user pools. So this is a bit more of a technical uh, area here. If uh, you all have questions on this front or would like to uh, pass this one over to more of your tech team to see if this applies to you, please feel free to reach out to your customer success manager or your account executive who will be able to help direct you uh, into more of uh, how you can learn about if your organization can take advantage from not only single sign-on, but now single sign-on with multiple user pools.
Okay, next, what we're going to jump into is some of the enhancements that we have released around communicating your program impact. It is so important to make sure that we're thinking about not just how you are able to, uh, to collect or work within your programs, but that as you are working within your programs and that you are uh, helping to measure and evaluate those programs, you're able to communicate that impact back out. So one of the exciting uh, pieces that we have released uh, is focused uh, within our newer inventory functionality. So I don't know how many of you all have started uh, jumping into inventory management, but it is an excellent feature with an apricot that has been available as of this year and very excited uh, to be able to highlight that not just the ability to, uh, to collect your inventory, but being able to view how your inventory is being managed. We have released dashboards. I'm a huge fan of dashboards. You're likely gonna see more of them. I think that they're an amazing way to be able to help highlight and show the most important and the key takeaways that you want to be able to see within your data. So uh, if you think about what are the common questions that everyone may ask, we wanna make sure that those are bubbled up and available and visible within a dashboard. So in this case, uh, let's talk about inventory. Maybe uh, you know there were uh, how many items were distributed over a given time, or maybe how many items uh, you should be able to expect back. So uh, this is something that we wanna be able to bubble up in an easy to view, easy to see way, and it's easily available through the dashboards. Um, so, uh, you know, it's such an exciting thing to be able to see this as a newer capability within Apricot and being able to highlight how we can start to show uh, and make it easier for you. So you don't have to go and build this report yourself. You can see the inventory data, you know, right here in front of you. So just uh, one of the exciting pieces that is also being built on some of the, the newer technology that we are building within the overall Apricot reporting environment that we're going to be able to touch on a bit more. But not just dashboards. I understand that some of you may also want to be able to build your own reports. We have included inventory data now within results reporting. So uh, not only can you see the quick hitter items within the dashboard, you can also, if you need to be able to build a report that is more defined or more unique to your organization, you can jump right into results reporting for uh, our, our 360 or enterprise customers to be able to see and build and manipulate that inventory data to be able to better use uh, what you are collecting, you know, whether, um, uh, you know, that is gift cards or any other form of inventory uh, at your organization or beds or anything else that, you're, that your organization may be collecting with inventory, you can go through and you can start to build those reports yourself within our very powerful results reporting engine. So really excited about this one. Uh, you know, and again, really excited to hear from you all how you're taking advantage of not just inventory management, but now being able to measure and report your inventory uh, throughout Apricot. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears over to our ETO product. I know that uh, many of the ETO customers on here are gonna be very excited to be able to hear what are the recently released items within ETO, and I'm gonna be able to share some of the exciting things uh, that we have been continuing to build uh, within this product. So uh, first, very similar to user unlock, we have two quality of life improvements to our ETOers. Uh, all of these were user-driven feedback, so that's a reminder to all of you to keep submitting in the portal, to keep reaching out to us, to keep letting us know where you are seeing areas that we can help to improve uh, the overall products. We want to be able to take these in and be able to help continue to bring these into our products. So the first of the two, enterprise managers, can now remove access to the support chat for all users. So what that means is that uh, if your permissions are complicated or if you are pushing out a big change and want to temporarily, ter temporarily remove access, this is a huge way that you can make that possible. Second, if orgs choose to use single sign-on, uh, it might be a bit confusing if users see that there is a way that they can still enter ETO that is not uh, required through the SSO path. And we understand that, uh, that that may be a challenge. Maybe if somebody is meaning to go through single sign-on and they see that they can still change their password or some other information, we have now made that an option that you can remove the, abil the ability for uh, your users to be able to see manage my password and security questions from the account dropdown if, if you are using single sign-on. So again, this is a huge value add for, for those of you who you know, want to have more control or better uh, configuration within your ETO system. 
Next, we're going to talk about data quality, and this is actually one of my favorite parts of ETO, and I know there are many to be able to choose from, uh, but uh, this is a the cross-reference element within ETO. So cross-reference pulls in an important context uh, that are held in other parts of ETO onto the touch point you are working on. So for those of you that are in Apricot uh, out there, you can think about this similar to smart fields. And actually smart fields were heavily inspired by this cross-reference or these cross-reference elements. So uh, we added even more filtering options to be able to limit the context you want to be able to show to your users. So that way you can now filter by site and that parent form. So for example, you can think about this as maybe you are building a touch point uh, as an art therapy program and you want your users, users to be able to cross-reference any completed responses from our favorite artists within uh, you know, the Texas touch point. Um, we only now have one site within Texas, so I'm gonna go ahead and set up the cross-reference filter to only pick up our Texas site when looking for responses. That is now possible within the new cross-reference elements within ETO. So again, really excited to be able to see uh, some of that uh, as it's been rolled out within ETO. And lastly, in our recently released for ETO, uh, we are also, we have also added additional functionality into the referral API. So if you remember earlier, we were talking about uh, there are multiple APIs throughout our products. Uh, we are focused on improving our APIs throughout our products. That way it not only makes the system feel better, it also helps to uh, enable more connectivity or more areas that your organizations can be able to integrate within our products. This is a perfect example. So ETO has an API for its referral service among many other areas that you can integrate with uh, ETO through its APIs, but referrals are so critical in the health and human services world. And the speed at which you can send and accept and get that participant into a program really matters. So what we wanted to do was improve the way that the referral API works. And this is a game changer for large orgs on ETO who are working with other systems. Maybe it's a clinical system, uh, maybe it's a job board, but you now have the ability to better connect uh, and hopefully integrate when you have participants that are in uh, need of interfacing with your referrals with an ETO. So really excited to be able to see this change out there um, and available uh, you know, with an ETO. Now, when I know that uh, all of our ETO customers have been really excited about is not just to hear all of the great things that we have released, but to be able to hear what is upcoming on our roadmap. And this is the area that I do want to be able to, you know, pause to be able to call out that again, uh, what we're going to be talking about next is what is coming into the roadmap and roadmaps may change as we start to build and understand what areas may be focused or uh, maybe we want to be able to uh, hear and improve upon. So, uh, you know, please make sure to understand that these are areas that we are focused on looking forward. And so first within the ETO space, uh, what we are uh, starting to build into and what we are excited to be able to come up uh, very soon is our workflow and automation. So workflows are a huge part within ETO. It's so important to be able to remember how you are able to get through the system, how you're able to uh, help to guide your staff through their workflows of what they need within ETO. Um, and it is great to be able to see such an, an amazing design system within ETO. So uh, it is important that uh, we can show the true pathway through the system. And we know that direct service provision is hard, it's really hard and it's harder uh, than many things that we're, uh, you know, that uh, that I can uh, you know, think of in terms of areas that you all are focused on uh, within your work. And what we want to do is we want to try to make that as easy as possible for you and for your staff to be able to get the data in and the tasks that you need done. So uh, in this that we're currently working on, what is coming soon, it should be in the next release is workflow performance. We are implementing caching to be able to help speed up the calculations and checks that can happen. And we want to make sure that it's easier for complex workflows to be able to happen throughout the system. And also, uh, again, so that way you should be able to see a nice little pickup throughout uh, your use of workflows in the ETO. Really excited about some of this. Next, within the workflow and automation space, uh, not just performance, but we also want to be able to add in some additional enhancements that maybe uh, you'll be able to see along the way as well. This one we're calling cross-check. 
So going back to, we are listening, we are hearing uh, many of the feedback that we are getting through our ideas portal and directly from you all. This is one that we have absolutely heard from you all through our ideas portal, through support cases, uh, through some of the comments that you all have you know, submitted uh, throughout the system um, that tasks and action uh, that may fall within the bounds of a workflow actually happen outside the flow, uh, not infrequently, right? So what we are doing with the cross-check feature is to allow users like yourself to be able to refresh the workflow so it brings in that work. It marks it off and progresses the workflow to match up with data recorded. So uh, this is an area where if you haven't explored workflows, I highly recommend that you start to evaluate the future to start trying it out and be able to <laughs> hopefully come back and enter in what additional ideas uh, you have uh, back to us. That way we can continue to make this functionality even better. So really excited about some of the areas that we are focused on helping ETO improve the overall workflow and help you all to advance the way that uh, you are managing your programs with an ETO. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and switch gears back to what I know that many of you all have been very excited about as well, which is the upcoming roadmap of an ETO. Again, some of the areas that we are focused on here, we're gonna be speaking more towards features and functionality that are in flight or building towards the future, but I'm really excited to be able to share some of the, the big things that we are thinking about that we are planning as we are focused on how we're advancing our overall impact management vision and be able to help improve, again, that Peloton and program impact, help improve to make sure that we are driving that vision toward 3% by 33 with in Bonterra. And the first thing and that I'm I want to be able to touch I'm on. I'm going to jump in real quick, Tom, just because you said ETO and these are the apricot updates. And I know it was on the slide, uh, but just to make sure <laughs> that that is clear, uh, we're going to talk about apricot right now. Ah, uh, thank you. You got me in a in a in a word uh, mix up there. What I meant was apricot. These are the apricot upcoming roadmap items. Thank you so much, Amanda. Ah, uh, all right. So the first one that we're going to be touching on is our focus on our overall. Uh, story of impact. What we want to do for our impact management customers within Apricot is to make sure that we can help to uh, help you all, not just with collecting the information within your programs. What we talked about around our overall vision for, imp uh, for impact management is to be able to connect the forms and assessments, to be able to connect your programs and your outcomes, to be able to uh, connect your reporting and any other data sources to help tell a cohesive and connected story of impact uh, within your impact management system. And so this is such an important area that we wanna help drive for all of our customers and make sure that this is an area that we can uh, continue to advance forward. So when it comes back to our overall vision and value themes within impact management, what we wanna make sure that we are doing is we are helping to leverage uh, some of that data that you all are, uh, are driving toward within your programs to help you improve your program impact and help make sure that you can communicate that into your community and help to fully drive that further. So when we think about what that means, uh, this is an area that uh, we are very excited and focused on is helping to drive organizations that work together. So when we hear about the ability for an organization to, uh, to not just share their impact within their funders or out to their supporters, but also within their community, right? To be able to think about organizations that work together towards a common cause. And this is something that we hear so much of. Uh, you know, we have an example here within the, the community violence space, but you know, honestly, we hear this, whether this is in housing organizations or domestic violence or so many different agencies that really need to work within their communities to be able to connect and share uh, you know, what they are seeing within their participants, again, whether that's through our network referral functionality, but also be able to share and connect some of the, the, the overall impact that they are able to drive and the programs that they are helping to, uh, to coordinate across agencies. So what we are going to be building toward is a closer connectivity within Apricot instances. You can think about this similar to how we've developed the network referral capability to be able to share participants, but taking that one step further, we want to make sure that uh, agencies are able to better collect similar data, to be able to better manage similar programs and be able to make sure that there is that level of standardization, really the, 
the, the, the collective effort and impact uh, that can happen between agencies when this is possible. So you can think about this as, you know, a lead agency potentially being able to uh, build a set of standards that can be leveraged within their community. And then for that community to be able to go and leverage those standards to be able to share back. Um, you know, this happens uh, all the time and what we would want to do is make this so much easier so that way you are not going through wrestling with individual uh, instances of apricot but, but being able to have greater connectivity between instances that do matter and so with this what i actually want to start with is uh first a poll a question i think that amanda mentioned this at the start that i do want to be able to uh first uh ask you all on uh how many of you are focused on working with a collaborative or currently working with a collaborative or a coalition in some way. So you'll see a poll pop up on your screen right now. If you can go ahead and just let us know, we're really interested just to hear from you all uh, you know, on directly how that matters. But it's not just about being able to collect the information and making sure that you have the connectivity of forms and questions across programs. It is also making sure that you can report on uh, that data back to your collaboratives back to your communities and also back to your funders right making sure that if uh if you are collecting this data in such a way that is um you know useful to be able to share to your funders in a collective way that we can make that possible as well so this is an area that as we touched on some of what we're building in our back end reporting platform some of what we're trying to build and drive uh to improve not only the uh, uh, the modernization of our apricot reporting, but also the expansion of our apricot reporting to be able to think about reporting within this network. So what we want to make sure that we are thinking about is how we can drive more aggregate reporting where that's important uh, and making sure that we can uh, share what that impact means or within your collaborative to truly understand what's happening across those, uh, you know, your overall partnerships and through your funding. So. I'm going to pause here for a bit for folks, to hopefully, if you've had a chance to take a look at that poll um, and uh, and give us an answer. Hopefully, we can hear how many of you all are working within collaboratives or coalitions. And in just a moment, what we're also going to do is we will uh, also pop up a second poll to be able to understand a bit more about uh, how you all are you know thinking about uh working in these overall collaboratives and coalitions so i'm going to give this just a couple more moments yeah thanks tom looks like uh we've got a a good majority of folks who are answering but again want to give everybody the time and space uh to let us know as as tom mentioned it really helps us um so gonna give folks another quick second and then i will uh send up the second poll here And we really appreciate your responses. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put up the second one. And again, we'll give folks uh, a moment to respond to that as well. Awesome, thank you, Amanda. Yes, so this is an area where not only do I wanna know about how many of you are working in collaboratives, but I also want to understand if you would be interested in speaking with us. What we'd love to be able to do is hear more about the way that you all are working together, about how you are thinking about uh, sharing in either your impact data or being able to share within the common fields and forms that are being used within your network. You could think about this um, as you know maybe you are part of a uh, a national organization and you know you want to be able to better manage the way that your apricot is configured so that way it's so much easier for you to be able to report towards uh you know uh, towards that information that's being collected or you're part of that overall collaborative whether it's you know again maybe you're a housing organization or a coc that wants to be able to you know share and uh commonly report up into uh your hud reporting or maybe you are an uh an organization that um uh, you know, again, in the in the in the community violence uh, example around wanting to make sure that you are working with those within your network, within uh, your overall neighborhoods, to be able to share what is happening on the ground, so that way other organizations like you can help with the greater cause that you are trying to drive. 
So really excited to be able to hear how you all are thinking about this uh, and really excited to hopefully chat with some of you so that way we can better learn about uh, the way your collaborative works and make sure that what we are building will fit uh, your needs. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'll give folks about uh, 20, 30 more seconds just in case uh, you are really interested. I don't want you to miss your opportunity to, to chat with us, kind of tell us your story, um, make sure we're, we're able to help. So I'll just give everyone a couple more seconds here. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Amanda. And thank you, everybody who participated. We'd love to be able to hear from you all. We'd love to be able to hear from you in these polls and, uh, you know, in all of the ways that you all are able to share thoughts, ideas, and some of this information back to us. That way we can help to make sure that we are building the best overall impact management platform for you all. Next, within the leverage network area, what I also want to be able to share that we are focused on is improving our API. So we talked about APIs at the start of how we're making them so much more performant. We talked about the ways that we are that we have improved the API with an ETO. We are also focused on improving the API with an apricot. Not only is it important that you're able to share the forms and the data that you all are collecting with an apricot and be able to share the reports that you all are driving from the impact within your programs. We also want to make sure that you're able to share any additional data that you need to be able to bring in or work with systems outside of apricot. We want to make sure that it is so much easier to be able to continue to integrate and help to, uh, to drive the information that you need whether it's inside of or outside of Apricot to help drive your program. That is what is so much so important for us. So we were focused on improving the overall administration and security of Apricot's API. So that way, again, it can be that much easier to be able to use, that much more secure, that much more uh, performant. So that way we can help to open this up even further uh, you know, across additional partners within our overall ecosystem. So really excited with some of the improvements that we we're making on the Apricot API side. Next, changing gears a little bit, we are focused uh, also on how we are helping to improve the overall program capacity with an apricot. So what we're going to talk about next is some of the ease of use and automation areas that we are going to be driving towards to help to improve uh, the overall use and optimization of the features that uh, we have with an apricot today. So the first of these that we're going to jump into, I'm really excited about this one. I know we chatted a little bit about it last time, and I'm excited just to see the progress that we have made here because it is so critical to organizations that are working with an apricot to be able to maintain drafts of their records, uh, not just when you need to be able to submit your record within an apricot form immediately, but being able to start, being able to save as draft and being able to come back when you need to. We want to make sure that you are able to collect the information within your forms, you're able to collect the information across your participants, across their programs and their services while you are uh, working with them, even if that means that you don't have all of the information in the moment to be able to complete and submit those records. So often have we heard from organizations that uh, that you know life happens or an instance happens while delivering a service that makes it difficult to be able to save within that moment. And we don't want that information to be lost or to have to jot down somewhere less secure than Apricot. That's why we are adding in the ability for draft records. So that way you can start your record, you can save your progress along the way, and you can return to complete that document when you have time or the data or the information that you need to be able to complete uh, what you're building into. This is such an exciting just value add for organizations that I'm excited to be able to see this uh, as we have continued to build it out and see the progress that we've made. Next, uh, we're also improving as we talk about programs and being able to measure programs and the effectiveness of programs. We want to make sure that it's so much easier to be able to use program enrollments. Um, so I know that uh, that's some of you have started using the program enrollment feature. It is such an easy way to be able to better track and measure the participants that are connected into your programs and be able to help guide them through the services that you are delivering and uh, be able to better measure you know, how they're going along the way. 
So uh, what we have heard from you all, and again, I appreciate hearing all the feedback, everything that we're getting within our ideas portals and ways that we can make this functionality better. To all of you who have started using this feature, we've heard you on some of the, the functionality that, that you'd love to be able to see, and that's what we're going to be focused on next within enrollments is the ability to improve how you're able to import data. So that way it is so much easier to be able to pull in past program data from either uh, uh, legacy systems or other ways that you've been collecting that information. We want to make sure that that is so much easier. So we're focused on importing data into enrollments. And then of course, uh, the ability to report on those programs. How important is it to be able to not just get your program data into Apricot, but make sure that you're able to see and report on what is within the system. So we are uh, focused on also making it easier to report on any agency specific context or being able to report on the programs that you are collecting within your program enrollments. Really excited about those pieces. We are also focused on how to communicate your program impact. We want to make sure that you are able to simplify the tools that you are using to be able to, uh, to report on that impact. As we talk about some of what we're doing within our overall reporting engine, some of that underlying reporting platform, I'm really excited to be able to share some of the, the, the fast follow work. Just as we talked about enrollments, it is so important to be able to collect data and to be able to understand uh, how your participants are entering into and completing your programs. We also want to make sure that it's so much easier to be able to report on those programs uh, once you have that data collected. So just as we have added in our inventory management data into results reporting, we are now uh, working on adding enrollment data into results reporting. We want to make sure that those of you all uh, within our 360 and enterprise uh, uh, you know, Apricot instances are able to better take advantage of your enrollment data. You're able to use our high powered results reporting platform to be able to connect that data, to be able to better manipulate that data, to be able to build the reporting that you need to, to be able to see the important dates, the notes, the exit reasons, everything along that pathway of the enrollment. We wanna make sure that you are able to better report on every one of those pieces. So really excited to be able to see the ability for us to help you focus on your overall programs, how you're able to collect that data, and of course, how you're able to report on that uh, across your organization and hopefully across your network. So really excited about all of the things that we have uh, you know, coming up in this next half within Apricot overall. So that concludes, and I uh, wanted to make sure that we saved enough time at the end. I think we saved a little bit of time to be able to go into. I saw, I was been watching the q and I've been seeing some questions rolling in. So really excited to be able to jump in and hear uh, what are some of the questions that you all have or have been thinking about um, you know, as we've been talking. Awesome. Thank you uh, so much, Tom. Really appreciate it. Uh, before we jump into q and I did just want to thank everybody uh, who did hop on just in case you have to jump before uh, we get to the questions. Really appreciate you all joining. Um, always awesome to be able to get some, some screen time with you all. Uh, and again, just a huge shout out and thank you to Tom for, for, the, for the jump in on this. Um, it was really, really helpful to, to see all these kind of what's been released, what's coming. So big thank you to you. Um, let me go through some of the questions again, try to see which ones, um, came up multiple times, try to pull up some themes, some unique questions. Uh, I think the one that I saw that came through most often, Tom was about inventory uh, and some folks wondering if this is live now, if so, how can I get started on inventory? How are organizations using it? Um, there's a lot of excitement around that and wondering kind of how to get going. Ah, yes. Inventory is such an exciting feature. And I know that we talked about reporting for inventory, uh, and I touched on a bit of inventory itself being available. That is such an exciting feature that was uh, recently released earlier this year. Um, and the answer is yes, you can get started. Uh, if you have any questions on just how to enable this in your organization, it should be available uh, um, to our enterprise uh, at, uh, customers to be able to go in and start looking at uh, how to be able to leverage um, you know, inventory, feel free to reach out to your customer success manager or your account executive if you have any questions. But just hearing some of the use cases that we've seen from customers so far as they've been starting to jump into and take advantage of the inventory functionality has been great, right? I think I talked about earlier just 
gift cards is a is is such an easy one that we've heard or you know um maybe it's bus passes or maybe it is you know some of the bigger items like uh you know like rooms or beds within a housing organization i know that when we originally built you know inventory we were thinking about how to better track beds and housing in general, but there's so much more that can be tracked along that. I think I've heard really great examples within aging services organizations, whether that's shower bars or walkers, or there are uh, examples I've heard around, um, you know, uh, check-in, check-out of technology like laptops or tablets, right? There are so many interesting use cases that we are hearing uh, around inventory that's exciting to be able to see. So really appreciate that question. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Tom, appreciate the answer. Um, kind of sifting through, I, I know a, a hot button topic that, you know, is just kind of relevant in life as well as here, uh, is, is around gen AI, right. And, and there are a couple of folks wondering how you're planning on utilizing these developments within these systems and kind of how you're planning on using that moving forward. Ooh, awesome. I love that question, actually. I don't know if you all know this about me. I am a data nerd, so I am happy to always chat about anything data AI, anything along that front, uh, really excited about this topic and especially how something like uh, not just AI, but generative AI can help to advance uh, what we're doing uh, within the social good space overall, not just impact management. Uh, so just as a, as, as a quick aside for anybody who has not heard the term generative, uh, you know, AI or has, you know, heard about tools like uh, um, like ChatGPT or other uh, areas out there. This is the, the the ability to use large language models. So the ability to uh, to better leverage data science and technology to help with automation or help with um, you know various aspects of uh, of of what organizations like yourself might be able to to manage. Um, what I will share is that when it comes to impact management, the data that we uh, have housed for you all, the data that we are helping you all manage within your programs is very sensitive. We understand that. We take that very, very seriously. So we are thinking very consciously about how, when, and where we may be wanting to introduce something like generative AI, let's say directly into our impact management products. I'm interested always to hear ideas and feedback from you all if you all are thinking about them, but an area that we are thinking about this within Bonterra as a whole is how to better improve the overall uh, grant connectivity problem, right? Making sure that it's easier for you to be able to, to find grants, to be able to, uh, to better connect with grants that make sense for you all, and hopefully being able to better and uh, more quickly and easily write your grants, especially as we think about how one day you might be able to connect in your impact data to help show the progress within your grant. So this is an area that we have been uh, been beta testing a bit. We do have a closed beta, so if anybody is interested in understanding or learning more about this and potentially being a closed beta tester, I recommend you to please reach out to your customer success manager, to your account executive, uh, or to myself uh, directly. I would love to be able to hear from you all on if you are interested uh, in how this might be able to help your organization better track, find, write grants, and of course, you know, hearing how you know leveraging your impact data could make that an even better proposition. So really excited about that one. Yeah, that sounds super interesting. Um, I know, I'm, I'm hoping folks are excited too. I know it's a big one for us um, and for you, Tom, the self-proclaimed data nerd. Um, really excited for you as well. Um, taking, taking a look, um, there were some, some folks interested by this idea of the impact hub, Tom, right? And saying, you know, it sounds super interesting, but you know, the reality of my situation is I, I have my funders. So how will that work? Kind of how will that impact me as an organization if, you know, folks on the call already have their funders in place. Yeah, absolutely. No, that is a really great question. And something that, again, comes back to why we wanted to ask the question uh, of you all through the poll. And hopefully you had a chance to answer. If you meant to answer but didn't get a chance to, please, again, feel free to reach out. Um, where we're interested in understanding is, uh, you know, how that data is collected, how you may be uh, wanting to be able to share that information back to your funders in general. Um, and we are thinking about how to collect, uh, um, you know, that data to be able to fit both the standards that we know that many of you all may have, you know, directly already with your funders or directly, um, you know, into your compliance reporting, but also 
again, wanting to make sure that uh, we're building this concept in such a way that you're able to really communicate or really share out the, the unique impact that your organization is driving. And so whether you already have an existing funder that you think uh, would be able to work within your collaborative, or you're already thinking about your collaborative and how you can work together, I think that's where, you know, we definitely want to be able to, to hear from you and be able to build out more of this. The how it w will work or how we are working on building it currently is, again, in making sure that if there are true data standards that need to be collected or true you know, points within your forms that you all are thinking about, whether that's individual fields, sections, forms themselves, that you know are being collected because they connect across your collaborative or are required for your funding, that is where we wanna make sure that we are uh, building those in such a way that they can be easily shared between not just yourself, but also within your collaborative. And what I mean by that is just the data collection piece, the form, making sure that you don't have to build all of these forms from scratch and hope that you are collecting data in the right way only to find out later when it comes to the reporting time that maybe you missed something or you know something needs to be translated in a way that you weren't expecting. What we want to do is we want, is we want to make the data collection and the reporting that much easier for you all. And the great part is, is that being part of Bonterra gives us not just the visibility into what you all are doing within the impact management space, but also working with the funders and the overall uh, you know, supporters that we see across our network to help drive this from both sides. And that's something that we really wanna um, you know, help to build into this product. So this is a piece of, uh, this is an area that I am really excited about. I do expect us to you know, see this kind of grow longer into our overall vision and future. Um, but again, hearing from you all uh, at, you know, as we build this along the way, it's gonna be critical to making sure that we build it the right way for organizations like yourself. Perfect. Thank you, Tom. Um, much appreciated. Looking at time, I think we may have time for two more questions. Um, so we'll do our best to, to try to consolidate and get to some specific ones. A um, couple of maybe more specific questions that came in, Tom. Uh, I saw somebody, you know, asking about enrollment, saying, you know, I want to use enrollments, but I have to have additional info. So does the upcoming reporting that you mentioned include the attachment of tier twos? Ah, yes, good question. I can tell that uh, uh, this is a, uh, you know, a well-versed apricot user being able to uh, you know jump in and see kind of where you want to be able to connect into your tier two records along with your enrollments uh, absolutely so uh, what we want to make sure that we are doing is the ability to not just report on enrollments alone but we know that enrollments with more of the extra information on what is happening within those services is critical so yes uh, we are planning to make sure that there is the ability to not just report on enrollments but the ability to connect to and allow for that reporting across those tier two records as well. Um, so that is such an important area that we are thinking about how that can uh, be part of just the enrollment, the reporting, the overall experience um, to make sure that you're collecting just the right data within your enrollments. Awesome. Thank you. Um, appreciate that. And Thank you for the thoughtful questions. Um, another one for somebody here saying, um, can I be both a lead agency and service provider in networks? Ooh, I like that question. So this is going back to some of what we were talking about around uh, you know, connecting networked agencies together, some of what we're thinking about in that impact hub concept around how to uh, connect uh, agencies in general. Um, and the answer is, yes, you can be a lead agency and a service provider within a network. And that's such an important role a lot of times for uh, organizations to be not just the lead agency or the agency that is helping to drive some of the funding or the configuration or you know, kind of the management of what is being collected, but also that agency being able to provide services as well, right? Um, this is not just for the largest of the, of the organizations out there, the largest of the nonprofits. Yes, what we're building can work for those large enterprise and large national organizations, but we are also thinking about this all the way down to the small collaboratives, um, you know, the small coalitions that are working together uh, and really wearing many, many hats where not only are you an agency lead, but you are also providing services along the way. So I uh, love that. And I'd love to be able to think about how we are, you know, helping to kind of, uh, you know, build this, uh, this system in such a way that again, can provide even more of the help, support, connectivity, and, you know, just connections that happen within networks. 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Tom. Um, that was a little bit of a yes or no. So I think we have time for one more. Um, and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll let you, we'll let you hop, Tom. Um, honestly, I just like this question. Um, uh, somebody had said ETO quality of life improvements. Love the sound of that. I'm like, who doesn't love the sound of that? Uh, and, and wondering what you're doing for Apricot, uh, in, in that idea of quality of life. Ooh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, we are doing a lot, right? I think that you heard us mention a lot around, uh, how we are focused so much over this past, over these past few months on making sure that Apricot just feels better on a day to day, right? I consider a lot of that quality of life, right? Making sure that, you know, uh, the system is so much more performant, is so much more, um, you know, focused on how you can get in get done and get on with your day, uh, you know, within the system. Uh, but there are a couple of key things that uh, hopefully you heard me uh, mention that we have both recently released and that we're focused on now. The first is the user unlock functionality. So again, going back to being able to uh, uh, think about how to uh, easily unlock your staff without having to go. And I know we have a wonderful support organization. I'm sure that it's amazing to be able to go and just chat with them uh, for anything. But uh, if you want to be able to quickly unlock your users without having to talk to our support organization, being able to go in there and manage that yourself within our, our administrative tools, such an easy you know, um, quality of life improvement, I think, uh, just to help save you those extra few minutes. So that way you can just reach out and chat with our support team just because you like to talk to them. <laughs> and then second uh, of what we are building next is our drafts. So I'm super excited about this one. This is one that, again, we've heard over and over again from, you know, uh, whether it's our ideas portals or uh, direct user input of being able to hear about how much better the system would be if you could go ahead and save a draft and come back to it later. So that is one that I know we've been working on for a bit, uh, but I'm really excited to be able to see the progress that we've made and hopefully be able to, you know, deliver this out as that massive quality of life improvement for you all. Awesome. Thank you, Tom. And um, for folks who are still on the call, if you have ideas, um, I know we're always interested in hearing them. Like Tom just said, we kind of heard those, took that into this roadmap. Um, so don't be afraid to use that portal. Or if you want, you can throw them in the Q&A um, section here. I know we're out of time, I think, for questions to get to your specific answers. But if you have ideas or things you want to throw into that Q&A section for us, um, we're, we're going to take that information. We're going to look at everything that was asked here today um, to help kind of continue to inform these decisions and these roadmaps. So um, don't be shy to, to leave them there. I'll hang on for um, just one more minute. Um, but as, as you do, I did want to just thank you all again uh, for being here for this roadmap session. We're super excited uh, about the entire Bontero ecosystem and specifically within our impact management uh, roadmap. Really hope you're excited as well. I know uh, Tully and Tom and the team have been really hard at work. So uh, again, thank you for, for taking the time to share that hard wick with us, with this group. Um, it's been awesome to, to see some of these advancements come out and see what's coming next. So just big thank you again for everyone on the call. Thank you to Tom. Thank you to Tully. And uh, we hope to see you at our next roadmap when we do it for the next time. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Take care, folks.